so close your eyes. People on the replay, don't, don't look yet. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think that might work. You can see the sewing machine. I'll slide it over a little. You can see my laptop, which is not important. You will be able to see when I put the ironing board over there and I have a microphone somewhere, but it's far, far away. I had to take it off in order to rearrange tripods. The one I've been using for years and years, it's a little bit wobbly. So it doesn't like hold my phone and every now and then the phone just kind of like falls off to the side or something. So I thought maybe we'll try something different. I like to have a different tripod for everything I'm doing. That way it's a different setup and I don't have to redo it. So we need old lady eyes needs the laptop closer. I say that, but my eyes have always been bad. Hi Jackie, grab your lunch, plenty of time. Hello Winona, Jody made it, hello everyone. I always like how YouTube asks me to join and become a member of my own channel. Thank you YouTube, I appreciate the offer, but I'm okay. All right, let me just rearrange, pardon the dust as they say. I have to be careful because that iron is the one that's on all of the time. So we have to be careful with what we do. Excuse me if I'm popping my hair into your way. One second. <coughs> we had a bad air quality warning yesterday. I have never experienced a bad air quality warning. Hi, Jean. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Carol. Welcome, welcome. I have had one of those weeks, you know those weeks where nothing goes bad, but everything goes a little, I've been calling it wackadoodle lately just because I've been calling the cats wackadoodle. So everything went just a little off kilter this week and I seem, I feel like I'm playing catch up all the time, like everything is just a little crazy. Ooh, 74 sounds good. I don't know what it is here, but I know it's another 90 degree day. That's really all that matters. We have the air conditioning on now. It'll stay on now until, based on Florida weather, I would say it'll stay on until Halloween. <laughs> but I don't know what it's going to be like here, how long it takes when the winter comes, because the winter is actually a little bit cooler here than in Florida, so we shall see. But one of you guys was making fabric postcards recently this week, so I said, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and do a fabric postcard for the live stream because I have nothing else planned. Hi, Giovanna. And a couple people were talking about them in the comments this week, so I'm like, perfect. Let's just make a scrappy fabric postcard, just my usual kind that has all of the little stripes, diagonal straight or whatever. You'll have to excuse my dirty pressing mat, but I like to bring this out when I'm doing things that, first of all, it got dirty from the move, and then I like to bring it out when I'm doing things that I don't want to get on my wool mat. I also have out a little iron. This is the little palm one from Pure Steam. I haven't been able to find this on Amazon. They did have a big recall on them, but my model number wasn't recalled, and I think they just pulled all of them off the shelves as a just-in-case. I have triple-checked this, because every time you guys say, hey, Robin, did you know there was a recall? I check it again just to make sure that nothing new came along for a recall, but mine's good, so no worries there. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I have that out. I have some batting. These are scraps from my batting bin. Some of them I actually Franken-pieced this morning. So there you go, you can see that. I have an old rotary cutter. It's got a good blade in it. I've cut fabric with it before, but I use this when I want to cut through batting and stuff. I've already had to clean my cutting board, but I do have the trimming one that I use for fabric postcards and my ruler that you've seen. And then a decent pair of scissors that doesn't have to be the best ones, but since I'm working with scraps, I tend to bring out the older ones and use these. Even though this is a newer pair, I've had it for a while, and it's good. It's sharp. It does what it needs to. You don't need my mouse. We can move that over here out of the way. 
I have a little pair of scissors for little snips for snipping. And today we are working on the CS6000 i Brother computer sewing machine. I think I put my sewing machines down in the description box. I have the 5050 polyester uh, cotton thread in white, which works great for fabric postcards. And I have a big spool so I can use them up. I have mostly cotton batting. The reason I say mostly and the reason I have this little iron out is some of my cotton batting actually has glue in there and it's not scrim. And I have large amounts of it, which means I purchased it by accident. So this way I don't get any of the glue from the batting on my good iron and this little one's easy to clean. Let's see who popped in. Hi, Giovanna. Oh, yeah, just how it is sometimes, Giovanna. You got to close the window and open it back up. YouTube gets a little glitchy every now and then. Hi, so Terry. Yeah, I keep everyone company. I don't know how long we're going to sew. I'm feeling a little, <clears throat> and I guess it's from the air quality, I feel a little asthmatic. I used my inhaler. My throat feels a little scratchy. I'm not getting sick or anything, but I just kind of have the... It's been a long week and I'm kind of run down feeling. I'm feeling very, I've had emotional things happen this week, but I'm feeling very, you know, can you hear it in my voice that, that, you know, you get that emotional days where you just kind of like want to curl up in the corner and not do anything. Cause look, I'm going to cry for no reason. So I'm having one of those weeks. You guys know how it is. Give me a minute. I'll pull myself together. Okay. My friend used pink for her scraps. We're just gonna ignore the tears. Have you ever gone somewhere and tried to like argue with uh, the telephone company or Walmart or something and you're just having one of those days? And I swear, I always have one of those days when I have to go and defend myself to someone and then I emotionally cry. It's always crazy. Hi, Laura. Jody, I think I might need to. I think, Giovanna, I think you're right too. I think it's the spring. It's the different weather that's here and not like weather, but the different things that are growing. And if I was allergic to everything that grew in Florida, my allergist is like, wow, we've never seen an allergy test like this. So if I can be allergic to Florida, I'm imagining I have to be allergic to Arizona. And it's just, it's driving me crazy. All right, so, so what I do is I just do this. I cry and I work because these tears are for nothing. They're just my body's release. And try explaining that to like a man or something, right? Or to someone who doesn't get like this. Ooh, it's just this one of those things. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to get something. Pollen count is really bad. It's definitely, because when we go outside, first we thought it was, you know, the dust and the dirt and the no grass. But I'm like, when I wipe my hand on something, yes, it's dirty, but it also has the pollen on it. And I'm like, this is just crazy. Just another good reason to stay inside my room here and not go outside, right? Hold on one second. I have to get a tissue for my nose. And I think also, I don't know about you guys, but if like, if I don't listen to my body and do what it tells me to, it's just like, hey, Robin, we're done. This is what you get if you don't behave and listen to us. All right. I pulled out my yellow straps. I don't work with yellow very often, but I thought, you know, why not? Jody, I think you're really 100% right. And also, Jody's been right about a lot. She's like, you need to get an electric uh, fireplace. So, you know, I don't want to have a space heater, but electric fireplace for my room because my room is three to five degrees cooler than any other room in the house because I had to check with the uh, thermostat. Yeah, it's... I was really surprised that that air quality warning came up because in Florida, we don't have like in my area of Florida, we don't have smog and we have pollen like crazy. And they tell you, hey, the pollen counts are high, but we've never got like air quality warnings. Oh, great, Laura. Thanks. I chose, well, we chose to move here. I didn't choose. It just happened. But we're here on the, we're here on the craziest uh, allergy time. 
my son Justin, he, he goes out in the garage and messes around with the boxes a little or just goes out there to take the trash out or something. He comes in sneezing and coughing and his eyes are watering and stuff. I'm like, you poor guy. I mean, you didn't even do anything but go in the garage. That's not even like outside, outside. Yeah, so Jody says to get an electric fireplace so I can stay warm in the winter because I'm not going to want to turn on the heat that much and I get cold and of course I have something for my cats. And then I'd have a mantle and a place to hang stockings at Christmas time. And then I've never had to get an air purifier. We've thought about them before, but a lot of the times in the past, they're just really expensive. But I think I'm going to have to do something because I actually close my door a lot and you're not supposed to. It's supposed to be bad for airflow in the house to close your door. But I close my door a lot and I turn it into like in a little apartment here for me and the cats. And I don't care if it's just us alone because my daughter's cats are they're always here so I like to uh, you know just create a safe calming space and I don't know if it's just my feeling of it or my, I can feel it from my cats but I think it's a combination because my girls will all come out and they'll, they won't hide underneath my bed they'll come out and lay down and stretch out on the carpet and want to play and stuff and they just feel comfortable hi Susan chilly and damp I heard a lot of people are getting winter weather again and that's just crazy oh wow laura i already do the nasal drops i take a claritin and my doctor said between my allergies my eye doctor between my allergies my um, medication and the fact that you know i'm getting older and my eyes are dry all the time it's weird because i think it could be, my eyes are not as dry here in Arizona as they were in Florida, but it could just be because they're constantly watering due to allergies and dust and whatnot. So maybe they just don't seem as dry. I'm going to just move my cord a little. I want to apologize to everyone, even though I know people say you don't have to, but every time I went to add the new community blocks to Patreon, I got sidetracked by 12 other things, and it's always just a little thing, like the, the internet. We had to switch internet modems, and then everything had to be signed into a new internet. I spent an hour and a half yesterday trying to sign my printer in, and I just never could do it, so I found a workaround. So it's like always a little something, but I just keep getting sidetracked and I haven't got them. But you guys have seen all the blocks that have come in, except for some that just came in. And I think that might be, it. I think you guys are all caught up. That's why I showed them on Friday and stuff. Hello, Sue. Sherry, I don't know if I saw you come in. So hello, Sherry. Hi, Cheryl. Bullhead City. Okay, Cheryl Peterson, are you north of Phoenix, I think? I'm trying to learn the different areas here, but I'm like, whatever. Thank you, Giovanna. That's why I figure as long as I put them up somewhere and you guys see them, we'll eventually get caught up. I'm like, oh, I'm three days behind. You know, I feel bad because you guys take the time to send them. So here's my pink one. Oh, I put a salvage on it. I brought out... I have things on my table behind me. I brought out a bin of salvages, but then I decided some of them were <laughs> some of them were too nice to put in a fabric postcard. So I am saving them, but I wanted to have like a pink one. But then I pulled out this pink one and I thought, well, that's too cute to put in a postcard because I just added it in and you wouldn't be able to see. So I just put my flamingo one in. So I'm going to skip putting that in, but... You guys have seen, we've done them in postcards before. Are they supposed to be set on point? I am not sure. Oh, the, the blocks? The blocks, the center block usually ends up set on point. Just the way you follow the pattern that's linked in my community video. But when you're done, it's going to be a square. Let me pull out some blocks. I received some more and i don't think i've shown these to you guys yet I, these are so cute i'm going to show them on whip it wednesday again but wait do you see i'm sorry if i'm yelling turn me down a little i apologize just adjust me on the volume before i show you that so these are 
Yeah, see the center ones, I have to look at them to think. The center ones are fine. You get the point on the next one and then they become squares. So they don't have to be set on point, but if you do something like they're not if you follow the pattern that I put in the link, you're gonna end up with a square like this. So these are the ones that I don't think you guys have seen yet because I just picked them up. So this one, I laughed. This is the first one I saw, and I laughed out loud when I saw it because those of you who have been around for a while, have, do you guys remember the crazy rooster mini quilt I had hanging on my wall in my studio in Florida? And that reminds me identically of it. And then this one, you guys are so sweet. You've been sending the fabric that matches like your pets and stuff so they no longer have this pet. Their pet passed away. So they use the fabric as a little reminder. So your pets and loved ones or, you know, loved animals or whatever are going to be part of the quilt. I also received a bunch. I'll look at the chat in just one second. A bunch of half square triangles to go with it. I love these two fabrics. But what I wanted to show you, the community quilts, I love them. But sometimes you guys tuck in the most amazing things. A flamingo card. Can you see all the embroidery, machine embroidery? And then I can't use this keychain. I'm going to use it for just like the mailbox here at home. So it's not like in and out of my pocket a lot. So it's just the cutest. I love that added the pink snap on there. So it's just a little keychain thing. And we only check the mail once or twice a week because we get the email that tells us what mail is coming to the house. So I don't check it very often unless I see something good in there. So thank you so much for those. You guys haven't seen those yet. Now let me check the chat just to make sure I didn't miss too much. Okay. HEPA filter. Jackie has three air purifiers. Now when you guys live here in Arizona, I have to take your advice. So if you guys have air purifiers, then it seems like that's something that needs to be on my list. Yeah, sometimes you just have to, Giovanna, sometimes you just have to sit down and cry and just cry. And then if I'm already going to break down for whatever, then I'll just think about everything that makes me mad or sad. And I'll just keep crying and get it all out in one shot. I like to do that when I'm in the shower because, you know, nobody's going to see you in there crying. Yeah, Jody, I think I was freezing when we got here and that was in February. I don't know how we're going to do December because we're cheap and we won't want to turn on the heat, but I think we're going to have to. Maine is chilly. Maine, don't you guys have like a very, very short summer? Like you only have a few weeks. Oh, look, can you see the bruise on my arm? Crazy. You want to have, don't look if you don't like bruises, if you think they're gross, but I've got a bruise there. And then I've got a bruise there. This one on my left arm, I was walking through the living room and we have those doorknobs that are handles like this. And I just jammed my arm right into the handle like that. That one, I have no clue, but I figure I must have done the same thing, but with the other hand. Okay, set on point. Do I like your blocks, Giovanna? I love your blocks. I love everyone's blocks. I would not have chosen the fabrics that you guys chose, but then when you send them to me and I look at them and I'm like, yeah, those fabrics are gorgeous. They go together. It's going to be, it's going to make a really beautiful quilt. It's going to be very fun. If we're going to sew eventually, Sue, I think today we're just kind of being a little social, but we're going to sew fabric postcards. I'm going to sew a yellow one eventually. It's only been 11 minutes or 20 minutes of chitter chatter. We're good. Check online for room size air purifiers. I found a couple at Walmart for around $75. I can move them around as I need to. That sounds really good. My girls are pretty good and they don't chew on the cables. My daughter's cats will chew on every, uh, every plug. Like when you plug in your iron and stuff, they chew on any cord that they can find. So I had to buy cord covers. I try to put things up on shelves or, but they can jump. They can jump on the kitchen counter. They can jump up on the refrigerator. They are crazy cats. So I have to choose carefully and then I need to put cord covers on everything. I have, I don't know, I don't think you guys can see, but can you, oh yeah, you can see while it's just sitting there. This is my 
my uh, surge protector that I use when I'm sewing and stuff, and I just turn my sewing machine on and off, but I have to put one of those cord covers on it. So if anyone has rabbits or cats or something or dogs that chew on it, let me know and I'll, I'll send you the link to the one I bought because my daughter's cats have tried chewing through those and they can't. You're west near Nevada, California border. Oh, okay. Thanks, Cheryl. Bowl cozies for me? Uh, yeah, I, I'll probably make some more bowl cozies. I want to at least make a scrappy one for myself with one layer of that special bowl cozy batting and see if that's enough to keep my hands comfortable and my bowl warm and see how that goes. And then I can let you guys know, hey, you can use this, but only put one batting in because it's so thick. Sandy, aren't those flamingos adorable? I love them. Thank you guys so much. I'll meal me. Okay, great, Jackie. Since you know that they already work, I'd love to take a look. Yeah, I, I hit, I was just cruising along dealing with my daughter's cats. They're like, come in the living room. We never go in the living room. No one uses it. And the cats are like, come in the living room. Give me some love. And so I was like, power walking, grumpiness or whatever, and I just smashed. I got too close to the wall and just smashed right into it. I'm not comfortable with electric blankets, Jody. I would rather just put two or three quilts on. I'm concerned with the cats because my cats sleep in my bed and they get under the blankets and they get on top of me and they claw and knead. I don't want to cause a fire. I don't want them to get zapped and I don't want them to ruin the blanket. So I, I make quilts, I just make more quilts. My problem is when I get out of bed, because when I'm in bed, I'm toasty warm. Yeah, I think, I was telling my daughter, she wants to buy a house in the next couple of years. I'm thinking more like five years. And I, I'm thinking, you know, what can I tell her and help guide her? And a programmable thermostat is high on the list. We rent here, so we can't put one in, plus, from the different things I've read on Facebook, a lot of people have problems with them here. You have to hire an electrician to put it in because there's something weird with the wires in the house. But a programmable thermostat is high on my list of things to do so that you can adjust the temperature and have like the heat kick on just before you get up and stuff. Yeah, I'm always bruised up, Sue. I'll be walking around and I'll, I'll hit something. I'll be like, oh, that'll be a bruise tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'm like, why did I get, how did I get that bruise? I have a bruise on the center of my chest just below my bra strap. And I have zero idea how I managed to get that one. The flamingo fabric comes from a tablecloth that I got. Excellent, Giovanna. We have to look, when we're doing stuff as quilters and stuff, there's, the quilter that likes all brand new fabric, quilt shop fabric, you only buy what you need and you never have scraps left over. And then there's the rest of us that go to like thrift stores or even buying brand new at like Walmart or whatever. And we're like, cool, I see uh, like dress shirts and stuff for men and stuff like that at thrift stores. And I'm like, oh, that's perfect. I'm buying that to make something into. Bedroom door handle facing down so that the cats don't open the door. Yeah, the cats haven't figured out how to open the door. Uh, thanks, Jackie. I'd have to do the same thing right away. My bedroom door here, if I don't push it firmly shut, my daughter's cats, they stand up on their hind paws and they bash their paws into it or they run full force and jump at the door to pop it open. So it's like I have to make sure I make that clicky sound and, or I have to like lock the door or something just to keep my daughter's cats out. Now, I... Being an older person when we got our cats, I don't, when I open my doors like this much, I never taught my cats how to open the door themselves. I always taught them to sit there and they meow for me or they scratch at the door like a dog to get out. None of my cats will have a door that opens in. They won't push through it. Now, if they're coming the other way, they'll push through it, but they don't like to have it touching their body and stuff. So I got real lucky. I act like I taught them, but you know, they taught themselves. All right, let's actually get some sewing going on here. I don't have a problem with chitter chatter on live streams because, hey, we come to hang out and have our own little like quilt guild, sewing time, quilting retreat. I have my scrappy batting. 
ah, sometimes I wonder, Giovanna, sometimes I, this is like a, a straight line. So I'm wondering if I picked up a box and leaned it up against my body and it got me. Cause I know if I push boxes, furniture, plastic tubs with like my thighs, with my legs, instead of like my, you know, picking up and moving it, I get bruises on my thighs. I just bruise super easy. So my fabric postcards, thereabouts are going to go four and a half by six and a half. I'll trim them as needed when I get to the new envelopes, but I take my scraps, ones that I don't always want to sew batting together for something I'm going to sell in the shop, unless it's like certain types of things. I play it by ear based on the project. If it's a scrappy project, I'll sew my batting together, but not a lot of little pieces, just like two pieces. But if it's just one piece of fabric, like let's say I was going to make a coin purse out of this, then I would use one piece of batting because I don't want to have the seams anywhere that you could see or feel. But with fabric postcards, I will do that all the time. And I thought real quick, we would just give a little chat about this. Now this, I can almost feel like there's glue on this one. So this was a leftover strip from, thank you, Giovanna. Oh, hey, Melanie. If I missed anyone that's popped in to say hi, my apologies. My mouth is rambling and I was looking at other things and I probably missed it. So if you want a hello, I will say hello to everyone. If you want a personal one, just say hello again and hopefully I'll catch it. Or everyone in the group will say hello to you and they'll yell at me in capital letters until I see it. Uh, so I have this, this was happened to be just cut off from, let's say I made the tote bag or something. So I have a reasonably straight line down here. And I thought, well, let's see, measure this and see how close it comes. So it's really simple. I just do the, here's my ruler. I fold it over and I know I can get at least one fabric postcard out of this. Sometimes I will take it like this and I will cut two off if the strip is really long. Ooh, I don't cut sitting down. So my ruler is six and a half and I like it to be about seven. So I just put my fingers with there. I cut off one. And then I can lay it down and so I don't cut my fingers and wear band-aids, I will cut off a second. Close my ruler. This goes back into my batting scrap bin, which is not there, but that works. I love having the sewing tables on because I can hide my tools underneath it so they're not in my way. I try to make sure that I have a reasonably straight line here. If it's not perfectly straight and you get a little wobbles, this is a spot where I'm going to sew my two pieces of batting together. I will just go ahead and cut it. You know, I love the fact that my asthma inhaler works when I need it to. I'm feeling much better already because I forgot to take it at 10 o'clock, but it makes my hands and I feel all kinds of shaky. So I trim that off and that way I can take it and those two reasonably straight edges try to put the same side so they're right side up. I'll just put them next to each other. Then I'll go to the sewing machine. I will find, for this machine, it's the number 404, so I'll choose that stitch. I make my zigzag as wide as I can, and I usually go to about a 2.0 stitch length, and I just sew these two together. I just hold them together. There's an in-depth video, I have a couple of them, about franken piece and batting. I'll just hold my thread till it gets going. And then I just bring these two together at the little center part on the, my presser foot there. It has that little line. If it's just a little wobbly, it's okay. I'll press it, it's cotton, it'll, it'll smooth out. For fabric postcards, I really don't need it to be as tight of a stitch as I'm doing. I could loosen it up a little, but I just, get in a habit of doing one thing and I know it works so I do it for everything. And then once this is all set, throw my threads away, I can come over and trim it down. I love the chat and keeps me company still having a hard time not having dad to talk to. It is definitely hard. Oh no, I have to cry for Jackie now. <laughs> Told you it's one of those days. It's definitely hard when you have a house full and then every oh look at that, everyone goes. All right, so now I have I have a 
Sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but sometimes I just laugh at inappropriate times. I have an uneven spot here, so I'm just going to trim that off. That's what I like about these groups. Like, there's, there's probably five people that are watching this video that aren't in the chat that are having just as much of a week that we're all having, but maybe worse. And they can find comfort and support hanging out with us without actually talking to us and having to discuss. I know, Jackie, I'll just keep talking. They'll go away. I was pretty good about that, you know. I can usually just work through it. Uh... Yeah, ja I was thinking about you the other day about that, Jackie, actually. I'm wondering how you were doing and if you were feeling a little bit lonely. Because when you're, when you're living with someone, that's one thing. But when you're taking care of someone that is having a health issue or needs a little extra help, you are spending more time physically and emotionally with them, and it makes that change a little bit harder. Especially when you're like, hey, dad, or hey, husband, wife, child, cousin, friend. You go to tell them something, and you realize they're not there. Oh, Giovanna, I'm a little nervous about what you might say. I feel like you might have a, um, maybe a little warped sense of humor, but go ahead. If you want to make us laugh, go for it. So I want mine to be about seven by five. So I, again, I just look and I'm like, oh, that looks good. And I have it on the five. So I can trim this bit off here and I can save that and add that on to the next one because maybe I might need to just make it a little bit wider or a little bit longer. So I do save those in the bottom of my bucket. Now, if I were making 50 of the batting for fabric postcards, I would save this piece just in case I need it, but I have so much batting, I'm going to throw it away today. And I do like to trim this up just a little bit so I don't put scraps on that little wonky spot. Now for my cutting board here, when we're all done, I'll take a eraser and I just erase this off, but most of it comes up like that, so it's not a problem. Alrighty then, so let's actually make a fabric postcard now that we're about 40 minutes in. A sarcastic sense of humor, there you go. That's what I was thinking of. Oh. We talk a lot. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jackie. It has been a very tough year for you. we want to feel like, you know, it's like, it feels like the world's ending. And then you're like, tomorrow comes again and tomorrow comes again. And you get to the point where you're like, oh, okay, it's getting easier. I'm getting better. And then of course that day hits you and slams you back down. And then you're like, okay, I'm good. And you get better. And those times in between stretch out more to compensate for not having anyone to talk to after my husband passed. I just talk out loud. Makes it a little hard because I can't remember if I had a conversation with someone or if I just had it with myself. So this one, as I said, this is too cute. I want to turn this into one of my, when I'm doing the rainbow zipper pouches, the Roy G. Biv, I did red, orange. I don't think I've done a yellow. I think that's the next one I'm working on. So I'm going to save that. Either put it in the yellow or the green. It's too cute. We did one diagonal. I feel like they look nicer diagonal, so I'm gonna show you what they look like straight so you can decide if diagonal's for you. Now, if I put this diagonal, it would take up a lot of it. If I put it this way, it, it could take up a big chunk, but I feel like I have more real estate. I can start at the end and work my way over, or I can start at the center and work both ways. They have a different look each way. This one tends to disappear. Hi, sleepy cat. Oh, welcome, welcome. We are making scrappy fabric postcards. It's just one of those things that I love to make. I have a whole playlist here on my channel if you're not familiar with them. I've been actually making a lot this week, but because, you know, I'm, I'm really in a chatty kind of mood, I'll show you the ones. Oh, here's, look. I found these salvages in there. I just grabbed a zipper pouch of salvages. I want to save these for a special quilt for myself because they have the little special design down here versus just the colors. And look at this one. Oh my goodness, it's little strawberries. 
I think in Friday's video, you saw what I'm working on with my patrons and they had little snowball corners. So I cut the corners off and I'm like, I'm going to throw these away. They're too small to save. And then I'm like, no, I have to. So I just look how cute these are. These are, if you put the colored fabric down first, these are just tri, can you see the triangles? They're just a corner cutoffs. So I put the colored fabric down first and the white on top. And on these, I put the white fabric down first and the color on top. And these are all exactly the same cutoff triangles. Look how different they look. And they're gonna make fun fabric postcards. So that's what we're working on. We're just kind of, well, we're mostly chatting and then working a little bit. Thank you so much. Did you guys notice that? Okay, here we go. I'm going to put this one down the center. I leave a little extra on the top, a little extra on the bottom. I'm dealing with scraps. These are my small yellow scraps. And then I have my bigger yellow, yellow scraps. So I thought we'd play with the little ones first because they're usually thinner. And... A lot of times people will just throw these away. Like, look at this. I use these for fabric note cards or fabric postcards or scrappy note cards. And instead of throwing them away, I'll just use them here. Now this is great for scrappy zipper pouches. And then we'll just see what else we have in here. We have fun butterflies. But again, I, I do it like you guys too. Like you wanna use it, but you can't because you wanna save it for something else. So these butterflies, they would take up almost an entire postcard. And then we can just add the strips. So I'm gonna hold off on that. But I do have some of this, so I can put this down. And I like to keep my iron right here. Again, excuse my head or face as it gets in. This is extremely thin fabric. You can see designs through it. So I wouldn't use it for too many things, but I think it's great. I'm overlapping about a quarter of an inch just so I can like choose my designs and stuff like that. Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, Giovanna, I stopped saving the tiny ones except for, <laughs> I, I, told my, I told my patrons, I'm like, these are too tiny to save. I save batiks when they're small, but I'm like, these are too tiny to save. I can't save these. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't save anything this small, but I can't help myself. So I went ahead and I did it. Oh, this quarter is what I use in the other tripod to get my phone to stay level, but it didn't work this time. And I figure I already paid for the fabric or someone paid for it and gave it to me. I cut it out of clothing or a pillow or something. So I may as well use it. I own it. Basically, this becomes free. It's leftover batting, leftover fabric, and then the cost of thread and time. Oh, I was talking again, talking to, chatting with one of you guys about them. And I was thinking recently that I use the scrappy note cards as thank you cards. And sometimes I send them out as a little extra thank you in my Etsy orders. So I'm like, well, I, do you guys remember these? I just bought these yellow gnomes last year. And then there's like cute lemon stuff. And this works great in, in uh, zipper pouches. So I don't want to use that. But I do have some of that butterfly fabric right here. So maybe I'll take this yellow and I'll put that on there. i cut off that butterfly. And then I can move this yellow over. And then I just need something down at the edge. Oh, I have this one too. So this guy can stay over here. And then if I trim, when I trim it off, I won't have to trim much. And I'll put those like that, something fun. And then I can add that in and I might need another little strip. So I just go in here and look Oh, This one is already sewn together. So it's like, okay, well, I'll just add that in just in case I need it on the end. I can put this, I can put this one on the end because I don't like how see-through it is. And then I can put this guy here, and then I'll put this guy here, and then add him, and then add there. So it looks like this time we're going to sew it from left to right so that we get going. Or I think I'll go right to left so this extra will be on the end. 
Fabric is very expensive, but oh yeah. So I need to make more fabric note cards, but I find that I like to do strips more than little crumbs like I used to. So I need to make a bunch of those to put some in the shop and to have thank you cards and to send them out and everything. I think that's what I might send my patrons as a little thank you for their support. I do so many, so many. I, I love, I just can't help it. If you look at my channel, there's a ton of zipper pouches and scrappy things like zipper pouches, like I just said, and the fabric postcards. And I have the whole note card uh, tutorial playlist or something too. Giovanna, who are you watching that did that? Did I miss it? Uh, yeah, I've seen people make the twine with the fabric and I haven't quite done it yet because I'm really not sure if that's something that's going to interest me because they go ahead and they use them, excuse me, wiping my nose, they use them on um, like handles for uh, crossbody purses and stuff like that. So sometimes I'll take, if my fabric is a little too wrinkly, having a small pressing board nearby is very helpful. I'll just line these up. So here's my first one. I'll put it at the edge and then I'll take my next one, right sides together. I try to line up one edge of it about a half an inch or so past the batting and then all the extra can go down there and I won't, that way I can save it if there's a little bit extra and it's all just one way. I, whoops, I don't have my machine set up. I do not have my machine at a quarter of an inch just because I have to press a lot of buttons, but I know about a quarter of an inch because with this project, it's not critical. You want it to stay together, but, and then with this one, I don't have to do any more stitching on it. It doesn't need to be quilted anymore, but if I want to, I can add more quilt as you go type lines. Thanks, Giovanna. So the Giovanna's talking about the Facebook group. It's not like a super active group, but it's a great place if you want to explain something that you were talking about here, or if you want to put links or something like that and pop up pictures. Some people just wanted a place to do that, and I, I don't actually, I don't post in the group or anything, because you guys see what I'm doing anyway. Now, I like to press, and that's why I have this iron in case it gets any gunk on it. You can put a pressing cloth, an old piece of fabric or something, but I like to push down and press the heck out of it. This iron never turns off, so be careful. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of a wonky spot here. I'm not going to worry about that. I kind of like it. So here's that little strip. Now, this strip measures an inch and then a little bit less in some places. That's definitely something you throw away, but it's there and someone saved it and sent it to me and it's got the butterfly on it. So yeah, I'm gonna find a use for it. I can make my seam a scant quarter inch. Sorry, this is the louder sewing machine and I've done something already. So here's your reminder to clean your sewing machine. Mine's clean. If you clean it only when we do live streams, then twice a month your sewing machine will be nice and clean. Change your needle if you have to. I use the same sewing machine. So I'll make sure I didn't miss anything in the comments. I use this sewing machine mostly for doing fabric postcards or if I'm sewing straight onto batting and then I let all of this machine get dirty with the batting dust and stuff. And I don't change my needle. I use the regular Universal 2014 needle. And what else? Oh, even when I stitch around it on the cardboard, the um, comic book cardstock, the really thick stuff, I still use the same needle and everything. I don't worry about it. I don't change it. If I'm doing a bunch and I actually make them like on my Juki sewing machine, I will change the needle before I start a quilt or some other project. But if I just make a zipper pouch or I go make a fabric postcard with the leftovers, I'll go right back and make a tote bag or something. I don't mind. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining us. I thank you for saying you enjoy my channel. We have barely just started. You just missed a bunch of chitter chatter 
if you want to go back later and listen to that. Do you guys see? I'm getting really good at remembering to turn those little heart things off in the comment area. And I also do not have the, the ads put on. So that basically means... Sorry, the Brother sewing machine is a little louder than the Juki. But that means there's no monetization on this video right now. But after we're done being live, I go and I turn the ads on. And that's just because I don't want you guys... Right now we have, we have 47 people watching. It's probably more because I'd have to refresh it. But nobody wants to have an ad in the middle of a live stream. So you might end up missing what the person who's doing the live stream is saying. So you can see it's a little bit wonky there, but I turn it back on later. And if you guys ever get too many ads in the replay, just let me know and I can go back through and cancel the slots. From what I understand, what YouTube does is they look at the video and they're like, okay, in this video, there's 35 places that we could choose to put an advertisement if we'd like. The computer tries to put it when I transition from sewing this to trimming them. They're like, that's a good spot for an ad. So the availability is there, but that doesn't mean they're actually going to put 35 ads in. Now that's to say sometimes the computer gets a little wackadoodle and it puts 35 ads in. It just means that there's 35 slots that an ad can go in. So if you guys see too many ads, I can go through and just cut back some of them slots. Now this one's pretty close to the edge. Sometimes I just give it a little pull and I stretch it a little just to make it go down. I take advantage of that little bias because again, it's a fabric postcard. When I trim this one up, I'm going to want to keep this part at the bottom more and trim off the empty space so I don't lose the butterfly. And then I have this one and it looks like if I do the quarter inch that I'm going to be a little shy. So maybe I'll find a small strip to put down there. I can use the same fabric. I can bring something else in. I'm sure there's a thin strip of something here that'll fit. Oh, I have this bubbles. Nope, that's all short. I can sew pieces together too. Now this isn't like doing a quilt block so you won't lose it in like the um, binding or anything like that. Oh, here's a good piece. I'll add that in. Do you have a black? Can you explain to me what else you can do with the postcards, please? I mean, besides sending them out in the mail to friends, you can hang them up in your room. I used to have them hanging up in my studio before I moved and use them as a decoration. Cards are therapeutic, no thinking, and it's great to not make any decisions, right, Sue? The noise is calming. I, I've seen a lot of people just enjoy listening to the sewing machine. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh, 10 ads while you were watching the live, Giovanna. I decided once they did the live where they're going to put the ads in during your live stream like that, I decided until I have a certain number of people, maybe closer to you know 500 or 1,000 people watching the live stream, that I'm not going to put the ads in. And we can also, as the creator say, put in an ad every 30 minutes. So then we can say, okay, 30 minute timer. Everyone let me know when it's 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes is coming up. We're all going to take a second to take a break. I'll stop talking. And then when the ads are back and they're over, then we'll start again. So that's nice to do that too. Hi, Leslie. We're just all chitter chattery today, Leslie. Not doing anything too exciting. Uh, do I have a black stripe? Oh, to put down in the yellow? Yeah, I could, but I was just doing a whole yellow one because I'm thinking I will put these in with my rainbow collection of fabric postcards so when eventually a year later I get them listed in my shop, people can order by color or just have them done. I love the sound of the sewing machine too, but I always want to take other people into consideration, but really, I guess... If you don't like the sound of the sewing machine, you're probably not a sewer or you're not going to be watching a live stream. Oh yeah, you could display them. Yep, use the little metal uh, holders. I have, all right, hold on. Let me see if I can get there. I've got to unclip my mileage of this. 
And sometimes when I'm making my listings for stuff and everything, I use this little plate display thing. And you can take your fabric postcard, or I use for zipper pouches and stuff. This one doesn't have the backing on it, but you can have a little easel. They have small easels, and you can display them like this if you have a really nice one. I haven't had the time to sit down and enjoy making a hand-embroidered version where you can add a lot of fun touches to it, but you can do that and make a really pretty piece of artwork. Do you still get monetized if a premium user uses your videos? Yes, Sandy, even though you're not watching the ads, YouTube figures out how much ad time you would watch and they give me that ad revenue. So that one works out really well. That's like a guaranteed one because every time you watch my video, I get ad revenue from you. But Jody could watch my video and there'd be no ads. But I guess there'd be an ad in the beginning, so I don't know. But yes, no worry about that. That's one of the things they want to make sure because a lot of people do the premium. I did not see Devi pop in. We haven't seen her in a while. How are you doing? Oh, there she is. Devi finally caught a live stream. Excuse me one second. Oh, and Felicity, I'm sorry. I didn't, I don't think I said hello, hello to you. Hello, Felicity. I'm so glad you can join us. Devi has made it. Kathy likes the humming of the sewing machine. Now, remember, I have a video on how to see the live chat while watching the replay, but the live chat takes anywhere from 24 to uh, 72 hours sometimes to pop up. So if there's not two little buttons down below in the comments and the live chat's not ready yet. Come on, there you go. All right, I think we're all caught up. Let me make sure my mouse is behaving off to the side and not doing anything crazy. Whoop, I did something crazy. Come on. Oh, come on, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna put this little stripe in. Now, sometimes I just lay the fabric straight down and I don't do a seam allowance at all. And then they just have the little frayed edges and that's fine too. This one has a lot extra. I'll just go ahead and trim that off now, save that. Now this I might turn into uh, the starting point or a little corner or something on a zipper pouch, or it can go on my cards or another fabric postcard. A lot of people use, I do have a wooden iron. It's still in, uh, it's, it's a little, like a little screwdriver with the wooden iron. You guys have seen it probably for those of you who've been here for a while. It's a nice rainbow one that someone sent me. And I do use that a lot for this because I can get a nice crisp edge, but I really just, I mean, this, po this poofed up anyways because of the fabric and the batting and I'm not using steam but I might go back through and add some quilting onto that, or I might just leave it as is. So these are good. Life has been lifing big time, and I realize lives are on Saturday now. I have to get it on my calendar. Yes, once we started doing the lives here in Arizona, I switched back to Saturdays. I used to do Saturdays before, but I thought with the time change, it would be nice for those that were used to the three hours difference, you know, in Florida time to be able to still kind of watch it around the, not be like late at night. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been popping my videos instead of 9 a.m. I've been putting them up at 6 a.m. just to help buffer a little bit for our international peeps and stuff. So people, some people like to watch the videos as soon as they come out in the morning, but if it's nine o'clock, East Coast is noon and stuff. So I bumped it back to 6 a.m. because I'm scheduling it anyways. And then that way you guys have a better chance of seeing it in the morning. Okay, right now in Surprise, Arizona, which is near Phoenix, it's 11.46 a.m. on a Saturday morning. See, Giovanna's catching us at night. If I did it later in the day, Giovanna would not be able to hang out. Oh, whoever asked Instagram. Yes, thank you, Sue. I do have Instagram. It's RS Island Crafts. It's linked down below in the description box. 
Sherry Rose, we're sitting here talking about what time it is and you put up 246 and I'm like, why is she talking 246? What does that mean? Duh, see how easy things go in and out of my head. Now I have extra here past my batting and just so I get an idea, like if I were quilting this, I would want to have this trimmed down, but to make it easier for me to see where I'm trimming, I will just go ahead and take this extra off and I can save that one. These pieces will go in the trash. If you want to use them to stuff pillows and etc., go for it. But that one is just not my jam. I think I use enough of my scraps that I get the time and money's worth out of it and I'm not wasting that much. You know what's funny is I was doing the pink one and here's my trash can. So I had these pink bits. Now, if I were sewing quilt blocks, I would have saved this pink bit and I'll probably take it out of the trash now anyway. And I would definitely save the triangles and stuff, but I've done so much already with these scraps. I'm like, ah, that's okay. I go ahead and throw them away. So it depends on what project I'm working on, whether or not I save things or throw it away. It's kind of funny. I had to laugh at myself for what I do. And of course, depending on what the fabric it is too. East Yorkshire, Leslie, Wall, Australia. Oh yeah, well, 4.45 a.m., that's a nice way to wake up. I hope you have a cup of coffee or tea with us while we're hanging out. Oh, speaking of, where's my drink? Time to get a drink. I've been chatting too much and I need to rehydrate. Plus my mouth is dry, so it told me. Two forty-six in Maine. Up, oh, Sherry's on the East Coast too. Then, if Susan's got two forty-six, yep, eleven, twelve, one, two, yep, that's three hours. My boys told me a hint the other day, and someone left it in the comment. I think in Friday's video, which would have yesterday. I can't believe yesterday was Friday. It seems so long ago, but to use the uh, world clock on your phone, you can set the different cities to show you what time it is everywhere. And I, cause I was like, okay, um, Robbie's got a friend in California. What time is it there? Well, we did the time change, so I'm lost. What time is it in the UK? What time is it, you know, a little east of us, all the way to east where my daughter is? And I'm just trying to keep track of all the times and I'm confused. And they're like, just put it in your phone, mom. I'm like, yeah, you just have to choose a big city. Like you can't put surprise in to, for the world clock. You have to kind of go to the map and see the largest city nearby. And it's usually Phoenix for me. Just checking in for a few. I'm on my way out to our annual sugar maple festival. Oh, that sounds like fun. Pork chop. I love pork chop sandwiches. Hi Bev. I hope you enjoy your day. That sounds like a great day. All right, Laura, we'll see you later. Hello, Constance in Texas. Yeah, when the kids are on, before we were just like, okay, I'm in Florida and we do daylight savings so I can kind of figure it out. I knew what time it was in the different areas, like in the UK and stuff. And I'm like, okay, nine hours behind it. It's when I was in Florida, I knew that there was the time differences like Australia was so far ahead and the West Coast was behind, but it didn't mean too much to me. But now living over here on the West Coast, I'm like, wow, this feels really weird. Okay, so here's my yellow one. I'm all set. I want to trim it down now. I can see my edges. Fabric postcard, if there's no batting behind it, it's not that big of a deal. But it's nice to see where you're going to be trimming and everything's lined up. If I'm not going to do any more quilting... If I do, it'll probably just be a little bit um, just passed over, a little top stitching, about a quarter of an inch or so past or eighth of an inch. So I want it to be a six and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to line the four and a half on the bottom, just trim off a smidge because I want to keep that butterfly. And I won't have any binding. I'll be doing stitching over it so things won't get covered up. Maybe I want to go over a little bit and have more of this yellow than that yellow. So then I just trim it. Constance, I am making fabric postcards. So they are going to be four and a half by six and a half. 
I do like to work on the zipper pouches and sometimes I just make them by whatever size my fabric is going to allow. And I lost in the move, it's somewhere here. I have to go to my Etsy shop and look at my finished fabric po pouch sizes to know what size to make mine. But I think I usually start at about a nine and a half by five and a half for my zipper pouches. But again, I change them up. We're going to be making some new pouches in May. I've been wanting to make the ones that look like this, but you put the zipper in the center so it goes like that. So we'll be making those and I'll be showing you how to put the binding on the seams because I promised that like two years ago and I just never got to it. So we're gonna do those this time around too. Australia is huge, isn't it? Oh, Vermont, Vermont's really nice. We went to Vermont when I was a child. It was always beautiful there. Bye, Leslie. We'll see you later. Have fun. Madly cutting the, wait, you cut your finger? Oh, oh, the fringe. Never mind. Sorry, Jody. I don't want to put that out in the universe for you. Yes, the fringe. I think we need to make a a fleece blanket. There's the braided fringe, the knotted fringe, and there's one you can do with a crochet hook. So I think we should do that too. All right, pink and yellow. What do you guys want to make next? We have the colors, the basic colors, and then I have uh, batiks also. Anyone want to choose a color? Now you have to check my playlist, but for these I then take my comic book board Hold on while I rudely go in front of you. I still have it sitting here. So I put mine on comic book boards. Some people put theirs on a piece of a muslin or white fabric. Other people use cardstock. I like how firm the comic book board is. I cut it down into four and a half by six and a half. I like, it's a very sturdy. If you received a postcard from me, they're nice and sturdy. I like to have them be like almost like an art card. You have you seen those artist trading cards that are they're about this big and stuff? So I kind of think of it like a quilter's trading card. It has a shiny side and a matte side. I just pick up glue sticks from the Dollar Tree or Walmart or something when they go on sale, or you can get them on Amazon. Okay, let's see where we are. I'm thinking I would use heat erasable pens to write on these postcards. People could then reuse them and pass it on if they don't want to. You could, I also talk about it in a video. If you write a short note on just one small piece of paper, like from a spiral bound notebook, sometimes I'll put a little note in on this and tuck it in and then they can take the note out and they can resend the fabric postcards. When I send them out and stuff as a thank you, when I receive something in the mail or I just, I give these away, which I meant to say, we want to give away some fabric postcards. I can give away these two right here. If anyone would like them, you just have to email me your mailing address and I'll pick a couple people out. You can let me know here and I'll choose names. Artist trading cards. There you go, Giovanna. Thank you. I do think I have some scrappy ones in my, you guys want to see my, collection of ones that I've been making. Postage is going up in July, Jackie. I checked with my postage lady and uh, so far I'm pretty good. I will buy more stamps, especially international. I mail out a lot of stuff. Some of you guys are very sweet and send me stamps. They're the forever stamps. So I'm, I'm reasonably in good shape. I bought, I bought my Christmas stamps ahead of time. When the new manatee stamps came out, I bought enough to mail out for Christmas cards. So I'll probably pick up more of these the next time I'm in the post office, just not on a Monday or whatever. This is my kids' um, crayon and pencil storage, so I keep my stamps in here. So sometimes you guys send me frozen treats. I pick up some myself at the post office, or maybe you guys have some leftover ones you send. So I try to stay stocked up. These are the international ones. These are a dollar something or another. So I have these. You don't get very many choices. There's this one and then a pink version. And I think there's a green one. So I try to make sure I have several books of stamps at any time. 
because as I said, I might mail out 10 things during a week. So I will do more. I'll purchase more coming up when I go to the post office later on next week. Because I have to take any Etsy orders, I have to take to the post office because we don't have mailboxes. So then I just take this card here and on the matte side, I take my glue stick. I showed it in the recent video. And then I just run the glue stick. The Dollar Tree ones aren't great for anything really, in my opinion. But they work fine for this because they leave like, I don't know, can you guys see the boogers on there? So I just put that on, and that's only to hold it in place. I used to use my clips, but then you have to take the clips off. So then I pop it on. I'll look at the comments in just one second. I pop it on, and then I take my clappers or a book or something. And then as I'm working, I'll let them just sit there, and then I'll do my stitching around to hold it in place. Hi, Sally. Okay, let me read. Did you see that post is just going up? Batiks, turquoise, orange, and green. That's interesting. Turquoise and orange sounds good. Purple and orange sounds good, too. I ordered stamps this morning. Giovanna, we have to go to the post office to mail. Yeah, I do, too, and it's, it's, it irks me. The post office is a mile away, and it's not that big of a deal, but when I have to stop what I'm doing here go to the post office. I really appreciate the sales. So I'm not complaining, complaining. I'm just being like, uh, I don't wanna. So then I stop, run to the post office, wait in line, chat with people or whatever. Cause I have to give, I print the postage here, but I have to hand it to the lady at the post office because it usually won't fit in their little mail drop thing. So I check my PO box, I chat with the lady, she scans everything, double checks the weight and the postage to make sure I got it right, which I usually do, knock on wood. And then I get back in my car and I wait at the lights, wait for the train go by sometimes, and then I come back home. And I feel like out of my rhythm, you know, it kind of messes with my rhythm. So I try to be careful about not going to the post office every day. I have three days to mail stuff. I was 100% spoiled in Florida, Sue, because I know a lot of you guys have the same situation. But I do like not having to worry about checking the mailbox at home. So then afterwards, then I just take it over, and it holds it in place so it doesn't shift off the card, and then I can just do my stitching. So that's what that's going to be like. All right, before I get sewing, did anyone want to see the fabric postcard collection? Now I've got to get dressed to go to the store. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Melanie. You have to go to, the, I hate having to go to the store. I really do. It's, it gets so frustrating. And the stores here are misleadingly crazy busy like I can there's so many ways to drive to the store down so many main roads that I might drive to the store and it's a very quiet road I see three cars then I get to the store and the parking lot is full okay I have to take off because I have to go in my closet I'll go get it and I'll see what I have and we'll see how many postcards we can give away today because you know I have the stamps so give me a second <coughs> I have to go past two tripods, a light, walk over a cord, and then into the closet. I love it. Okay, now these are postcards for my shop and things that I'm building to go into the shop. So I'm trying to build up the collection so that I can do the, uh, like a subscription thing. So like every month you'll get a rainbow postcard you'll get like you know I'll do the red orange yellow green blue indigo some turquoise black and white or whatever and then people can choose maybe you want to be part of the holiday club but before I do that I need to have the postcards already made so I keep them in this bin here this one is the Stairlight 15 quart it's 17 by 11 and an eighth by six and something or another but the postcards sit really nice in here I love coming in and seeing them because all the different colored threads and everything that I use, so it's really fun. So I, I'm just trying to build up stuff like this. Now some of these are already in the shop, like the Elvis one, and then I have certain ones, the flamingos, that I'm collecting, so I have some of the Irish ones. I'm working on, as I said, the colors. So there are some in there. 
And then this one, this one's actually mine, I think. I don't think it's in the shop, so I saved that. So I make some with the one fabric and then some with just fun. So let's see what we have here. We can give away this one. Where are we at? Oh, thank you for subscribing, Melanie. I appreciate it. Oh, and Sleepy Cat also. Yay. Bell bottoms. Jody. As soon as I finish cutting this fringe, I have to find a 70s outfit. It's a theme birthday party. Fun. So thank you, Jody. Hello, Donna from Oklahoma. So we can, and then I just, like I said, I just kind of make what well, you guys can see from here. Oh, here's a fun one that I made. I send them out to my patrons, receive them. And then I, so here's some batiks. And then there's a purple. Oh, and here's my elf one from Christmas that I sent my patrons. I did take these out of the shop, but I do have several if anyone's interested in them. So I find that this is a great way to store them because they don't get dusty, nothing gets on them. Where's my lid? Now I've showed in a video my collection that I've received in swaps. So the Barbie one may or may not be in the shop. So there's some turquoise. Oh, I have some of these. So let's do a flower since it's springtime and one of these. And here's the moon ones, like that one fabric. I think those are actually in my shop right now. And here's a fun one. So, I mean, not everyone wants to have a beer one, but then, so I just take the little bit of scraps and add something to it. A lot of these were made during our, our sewing time. There's just one fabric, so you can do that. So as you can see, I'm trying to make 10 of each color and have them do that way. Hi, Lee Allen. I am listening, but doing other things. So basically lurking here. I love my lurkers. I love to lurk. I know. Aren't the elf legs fun? Dominoes. Yes, they do look like dominoes, right? Hi, Becky. So here's what... I lost my train of thought. Oh, the elves. The elves? No. Yeah. Well, whatever on those. Yeah, those are in there. And I have, like I said, there's some in the shop. And when I did last year, oh, I was going to say for my patrons this year, it's been requested to do snowmen. So I'll have to start working on them soon. Now, last year I did the snowflake ones where I individually by hand cut out the snowflake appliques and then sewed them on. So I have all the reverses of it because I couldn't throw it away. It's got the heat and bond on it. So I thought that might be fun to make some winter ones and do the reverse applique for those. So I couldn't throw that away because I made like 50 of them. So that would be a total waste of my time. So I have these four fabric postcards. If you would like a fabric postcard, if you haven't received one before or if you have, We'll try to do the new people first. I can send them internationally for the cost of a stamp. They mail just like a letter. I put them in a clear envelope so it looks just like this. I would love to send one to you guys. You just have to let me know in the comments. And what you would have to do is email me to my RS Island Crafts. It's down below in the description box. Email me your mailing address. And I'll let you know if four people send them to me. If there's more, I might send more. If there's 20 people, I probably won't send that many, but I can send four to six. So it comes like this, and then I just put the shipping label on the back, and it mails because it's a quarter of an inch, and it fits the guidelines for the post office. I think the U.S. post office is five by seven, so I made sure they were smaller. So by the cost of a stamp, I can mail these. If you put them in a regular envelope, you can mail them if you don't want them to get dirty. Some people mail them like this. But by not writing on it other than signing it, if you get one and you're like, eh, I don't like that one, you can give it to someone else, send it in the mail yourself. Put it in an envelope or just stick a stamp on it and mail it. So I try to be considerate when I send out like a thank you or something like that. Sally lurks all the time. I love to lurk. Oh, the snowmen? Yeah, we're going to do snowmen for my patrons this Christmas. I'm already looking at, I have several uh, chosen, so we'll see. I might do a mix of them. 
it's really simple. They're going to be like appliques. So I will either purchase a pattern that's already made because I like the look and I don't want to come up with my own. And it's nice to support other small businesses on Etsy. Or I will just find something online and create my own. Depends on how long I wait, right? Since retiring in October, I get easily distracted and often forget what I'm doing. Oh, Sherry, welcome to my room. Welcome to my brain. I'm constantly distracted. And then I have some that if I find a fabric, even if I'm going to put it in like the scrap bundles. So thank you guys so much for purchasing some scrap bundles. I might pull out the fabric. So someone sent me some of these specifically for fabric postcards. They are meant to be, I think they were meant to be fabric postcards. You can buy panels now, but some of them are just too cute not to use and create. Oh, so here's some of the ones that are left over that I just, I didn't like how kind of dirty this blue fabric ended up looking. So I will probably applique or I mean, um, I'll add more fabric and just do it like we're doing the one right now and create new ones so it covers up most of that blue. You can even, if you make coasters or mug rugs of this size, you can mail them for the cost of a stamp. I do that all the time. Now tell me truly who in their right mind wouldn't like your cards. Oh, Giovanna, I wasn't looking at your name and I went... I went to the dark space, you know. Now tell me, who in their right mind would want one of those pieces of trash? My apologies for my crazy brain. Oh, yes, Rose. Definitely re congratulations on your retirement. Do you have the AccuQuilt? Jackie, I do have an AccuQuilt. I do not use it because for the most part... You guys see what I create. The AccuQuilt is not helpful for me. I have it from when it very first came out and everyone in blog land was giving them away. And if you put a video on YouTube, you got free of the, the, the cutting things that go through, whatever they're called. And you could buy one, get one free. You can win them. I won a ton of them. I bought some. And they're just sitting out in a box in the garage. Margaret says, I really love how you are so organized. That is what I'm puttering. That is what I, that is what I'm puttering is about making my room for my project. Yes. If you find that you have things for me, if things are more organized for my brain, this works. So when I say, Hey, I want to give away fabric postcard. And you're like, yes, I can actually do it tomorrow. I can put these in our little community box. I just can't put packages because it's only like this thick. So I can find that. And if I'm like, oh, where's my, I need a red scrap. Well, let me go dig through this laundry basket of a thousand other colors. So I found if I keep myself organized, I spend less time looking for things than I do crafting. Now I just spend more time procrastinating and trying to decide what to do first, which is why I now use my notebook. So it helps keep me organized. So I just write down here in my little notebook so I don't forget, like add community blocks to Patreon, schedule the live stream. I have some projects coming up that I want to work on for the advent and things like that. So if I write it down, the dies. Thank you, Giovanna. So if I write it down and then I'm good. Oh, they have a snowman die. That's cute. The dies are great like that for the applique because you can put your fusible on your fabric and then cut it out and you know, you're done in one shot. It makes everything really quick if you need to cut a whole bunch. Yeah, the strip dies would be really great. I When I first had one, they had like the multi dies on the same thing. So like it'd be great to put a piece of fabric down and cut a whole bunch of two and a half inch squares. But it was a two and a half inch square. It was the... The, core, the two triangles to make a half square triangle. There might have been a rectangle. So you couldn't get like 20, two and a half inch squares off the same die like you can now. This was before they had the two color gray dies and stuff where we had to draw around it with a marker. All right, let me grab my batiks. We're only 12 o'clock. If you guys think we can keep going, I will grab my batik bin and get rid of my yellow. So if anyone wants, as I said, a fabric postcard now or on the replay, if four people on the live stream claim these, I will still take 
more people on the replay because it's not your fault that you couldn't watch the live stream, right? So if replay people, if you're hearing this, let me know, send me an email. I'm a very generous person. And even if I have to sit down and make one for you, I don't mind. Oh, please don't make me do what I enjoy. That's how I get caught procrastinating sometimes too. I'll get sidetracked. One of you guys will do something or I'll see something somewhere and I'll be like, oh, nope, can't work on videos today. I've got to work on that. All right, check up on the comments. Thank you so much, Sherry. Hi, Margaret, you're very welcome. You mail the mug rug for $1.13. It's nice when you can just spend a little bit of time. Mug rugs are thin and light, so even if you put them in a manila envelope, a lot of times if someone purchases just a coin pouch, they flop around too much in my, that plasticky envelopes that I use, Tyvek or whatever they are. So I'll put them in a manila envelope and they mail real inexpensively. Lee Allen. If you want, I mean, if you know which one you want, you can try. Okay, so here is, here is a uh, blue and green cats, yellow and pink cats, yellow flower, and green sun. So if there's one you like, go ahead and let me know in an email, send me your mailing address. Even if I have your mailing address, it's easier if it's right there in the email. So I read your email, then I mark it as unread. So then I pull out, I try as soon as I can, first thing in the morning, I love sending out postcards and writing addresses. That's like the easy part. So I will sit down and write the addresses and do all of that and get you in the mail. And then I move your email to my addresses file. So if, if in three weeks, Lee Allen's like, you know what? The sky is blue and I hate it today. I might send you a card with rain clouds on it to make you feel better. So if I know your, e your mailing address is in my email, I just pull it out. Makes life easy that way. And sometimes I just say, oh, I'm sorry you're having a bad day and I really don't have it in me to send a postcard even though I wish I was that person. Oh, I know the bin is a trash can. Even a lot of people here call it a trash can, but I don't know, these are bins. Bins and buckets, I just, bins. I don't know if it's a Southern thing or what. And it's not like I call them bins all the time, but I think Dollar Tree sold or still sells these. I think they called them locker bins. I like it. It's a short word. See, I just used a hundred words to explain why bin is a nice short word because wackadoodle. Hi, Janice. We're still being wackadoodle and rambling here. I'm glad you can join us. Janice, if you'd like to receive one, just go ahead and send me an email down below, the RS Island Crafts one. If you email me on the Hotmail one, I'll get it eventually, but I don't open that up that often. Can I exchange a postcard with you? I did one of the clips. Margaret, I love to swap postcards so that I can have them hanging on my wall as artwork. Anyone who ever wants to trade one, if you send me a fabric postcard to my PO box, excuse me, the water went in a weird way. Whenever I receive a uh, fabric postcard, I either make one or pull one out of my bin. That's why it's great to have a bunch sitting there and I will mail you one as a thank you, always. As best as I can, if I've missed anyone, I apologize. Send me an irritated email and tell me that I missed you and I'll send you one. But I try to do tit for tat, so it's back and forth. Uh, oh, you cut the paper. A lot has changed in the crafty world. So much to learn and discover. Yeah. Everyone does something different and I'm constantly learning something new. And then sometimes I'll see, like YouTube is great because I'll watch one video and I'll be like, oh, I've never seen that before. And I'll go on the hunt for more videos and I'll see videos that are like seven years old. I'm like, gee, Robin, you really missed a mark on that one. Now, my batik bin is not in the greatest shape in the fact that I have a bin with small pieces. I just don't know where it is. So we're gonna play with the big pieces today. Now, I know everyone's not a fan of these, but I, I don't look at skulls the same way everyone else does, but I just love that strip. So I probably won't use it right now, but I do love it. I'll probably save it for, if I find it again, for Halloween time. Some of these are short, so what we can do is 
Look, batiks, you have to save every little batik. Let me catch up. Did it finish with blanket but need to put on a label? I forgot almost that I put on labels just before I go to mail things out. Never happens. I mean, I always, it always happens. I'm always forgetting something. Oh, Coffee Alley. Yeah, I was just thinking this morning too. Do you guys, if anyone's listening to this, let me know. Is this a comfortable time? Do we need to go a little later in the day? I can't go any earlier. Is Saturday working for you? Do we need to switch days? Just checking on, uh, make sure I stay caught up on the chat. Lee Allen sent me an email. Thank you so much. Dusting them off. Great, great. Dusting. I returned my AccuQuilt. It wasn't working for me. Yeah. So Giovanna, the skulls, you like it, huh? So we have, I know you guys chose colors, but I'm just going to go with batiks and see what fits. A lot of times I'll lay it down and I'll be like, ooh, no, I don't like that. You know, do I like that? Eh, that's not bad, but let's see what else we have. Now these are lookalike batiks. They were printed, so they look like, oh, sorry, uh, the floor this is one of those fake wood floors that they just floated on top. Just This is the same rental company, <clears throat> excuse me, in Florida as it is here in Arizona. And they, they just float the floors. So sometimes when I step on it, there's an air pocket. So these look like batiks, but they're not quite a batik. But it still works fun, especially for fabric postcards. Let, time is great. It's working for everyone. Good, good, good. You have to save the scraps of the batiks. There are... They're like, they're a little more expensive and they're just so fun. I can't help it. I have Ziploc baggies full of like the smallest bits and I'll just put them down on a piece of fusible interfacing. Yeah, it's working out really well. I still, I keep saying it, I'm like, but I feel it's coming a little sooner to do pop-up live streams. I can't guarantee like we'll do a live stream every week, which is why I do it on the first and third Saturday. People get to go out and live their life and not miss a live stream. And then I don't have to feel tied down, but I still would like to do a random live stream on the other weeks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, our habits can be a little expensive, so we need a little extra time at work to pay for it. Yeah. To be, it just takes a bit to figure out the time, right? Uh, Sue Smith, thank you very much. Sue reminded us that if Robin remembers to put up the, hey, I'm going live today, you can look at the bottom and it says live stream in so many hours. It'll tell you in your time when it is. It won't tell you like on Tuesday that Robin's going to do it on Saturday because if I post the live streams ahead of time, we get more spam bots than if I just do it on the morning of. Yeah, I love the sugar skulls and everything, but a lot of people just get very upset with me when I put skulls and stuff. Do you use other type of fabrics for postcards like denim or just... Oh, that's the great part, Sleepy Cat, about postcards because you're not wearing them. You're not washing them. You can put anything you want on it. Like, if I wanted to, I could take... This is made on cardstock, but I love the flamingo. And if I just put it away, it might never um, be seen or anything. I can put it right here on a fabric postcard, put fabric, stitch it right to the card here. I would have to, I don't want to open it up. It's got a nice note in it, but I would just take the front page of it and I could stitch it down with fabric, stitch all around, and I can hang this up. And it's something I probably will do is hang it up. I found a lot of my denim scraps in the jeans that I've saved and I've been watching videos and I joined a, a denim repurposing group on Facebook and I want to start making more denim crafts and stuff like that. Maybe there's something good. Oh, look at this. Let's make a mess. I, you guys know if you've been here for a while that I'm not a fan of making a mess, but sometimes we just have to. Okay, so I wanted to show you. Did I lose... We made a pink postcard, right? I made a pink postcard. Mm. 
that's funny. Okay, anyway, I wanted to show you, this is the straight version, and if you've been here, you saw the crooked version. So I managed, oh, it's with the flamingo. Got it, got it, got it. So here's the version of what a diagonal and what a straight will look like. If your fabrics are various widths, then maybe it might be a good idea to do the diagonal. Sometimes I do uh, like a jelly roll race or something, and I sew them end to end. And then I just put them on the card however they end up. That orange strip should be diagonal, so you use as much as possible and don't lose any. Exactly. But it would definitely need to be on the second strip like this. This would be something that I might use for uh, the start of a zipper pouch. I do have a video on my scrappy zipper pouches. I mean, oh, here's the pink flamingo from the 50,000 subscriber. Isn't that great? We're gonna use that too, definitely. So I think we will use, we'll just go through right there. Just make a decision. This is just a little fabric postcard. Don't have to think super hard about it. I could play with this all day and just decide on that strip. So let's move this out of the way. Some people just put it down, wrinkles and all, and I just, it comes out nicer. I've done it in the past, and you can do anything that works for you, but I find that it just comes out nicer if I give it a little press. And will this work right there? And it will also work right there. Oh, look at this one, perfect. Oh, look, this is a fun one too. I love because the batiks tend to have a lot of designs. Now, the person, if you've been here for a while, you remember I did a, a swap. I knitted a bunch of stuff, and the person I knit it for sent me her mother's batik stash. But the problem is, is her mother liked the darker batiks, and that's great. I think you need to have a bit of everything, but I like the brighter ones, so I need to start purchasing small amounts of brighter batiks but i love that they have the flowers and stuff oh we are going wild and crazy with this one look at us crazy girls doing our stuff and there's usually not salvages a batik flamingo isn't that right yeah leon and that's what's in the the widest bit of the flamingo for the giveaway now this is a little dark but you know what I'm feeling a little bit of an attitude today, so I'm going to put it in. Now, normally I would fold this all up nice and neat, but... Oh, see here, this is fun stuff. You can just sew all of these together and then create something out of it. And you guys have been here for a while. You've seen me go through my Barney bag where I take pieces left over from your projects or my projects, and then I just sew them I want to keep this one. I use this fabric a lot in zipper pouches, and it's a great fabric to use. And then I just sew them however I can into a, a zipper pouch. So if we've got some dark stuff with the purple, I don't think sometimes it's better to look at a picture through your phone than it is here. But I have this one that I was supposed to use. So let's put this bit on. There we go. Yeah, normally I fold this all nice and neat and put it back as I'm going. So when I'm done sewing, I'm not buried deep in a mess. And I also don't accidentally put a project away into the scrap bin like this. So I like to have, my mind cannot be creative if there's a mess on my table. Oh, maybe, that one was really fun. I like it, but maybe we should put... That guy's awfully wide, but I think it would work nicely in there too, but we'll save it. There's other projects. Now this one, someone sent me their binding. Leftover binding strips, you can see the diagonal right there. That works. I don't mind, I'll use it on something. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything. The Batik Flamingo. Uh, the Purge, oh no. 5.20 a.m. for Sharon in Australia. I would have put the dark in the middle. Yeah, we can put the dark in the middle, but I don't know. I'll probably change this out anyway. And now my lips are chapped. 
So, where's my chapstick? I keep my chapstick at the table. I just move some things off for room when I do the live streams. Yeah, this one's really pretty. I like that one. Hi, laundered cotton quilts. Catch the replay. All right, thank you guys so much just to pop in and say hi, even if you're going to be here on the replay. Hey, Mendez, same here. I need to begin in a clean, tidy space. I have to. Even when I'm doing, like, dishes in the kitchen and stuff, I kind of organize and clean stuff so that everything is looking nice as I'm going. It just, it irks me. I, I just feel like I need to be clean. There we go. See, sometimes you just have to adjust your thinking. And what works for me also is if I just take this, I used to have a table in L-shaped sewing space. Now I just have this space plus my laptop. This red towel is where I put my wool pressing mat. I can't leave it out because the cats use it as a scratching post. But just by taking this and either putting it back on the shelf or putting it on the table behind me, it opens this space back up and I'm okay. You know, I, I can just keep sewing again. The problem I'm running into, and I was wondering how you guys who have moved can still be like unpacking a year or two later, but I realized once I unpacked everything that I need, that I don't feel like unpacking the rest, even though there's things in the rest that I would love to still be playing with. Yeah, the fabric nice and neat and folded. It, it's easier to get to, and then if it's not just jammed in a Ziploc bag or a basket or something, I won't have to press it every time. I, I, have, I have, before I cook my dinner, I've already wiped down the counters. Because of my food allergies, I have to make sure there's no cross-contamination. So I wipe everything down, and then I get the dishes going in super hot water, and then they are, I'm washing the dishes while my food's cooking. But I only cook once or twice a week. And then I eat from that. I meal plan and meal prep, even though I don't leave the house. Because it just means that, I'm just tucking my microphone cord out of the way. It just means that when I'm sewing and working and everything, I don't have to, I don't have to, what, stop to cook. I can just take 10 minutes or whatever I need to eat. And then I can... Go ahead and get back to work right away. I was just thinking about my bed. I make my bed, and I love to have a bed that's nice and neat. I never used to. This time we're going to do the center with the pink. I really do prefer the diagonal. It just kind of gives it a little bit of a different look to it. Uh, maybe I'll do this, and then it'll take less of that yellow this way. Yep, and just test it. I can always make the card a little bit narrower because I know I'm going to trim some off. And I can always add a border to my card even, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just go with a thin seam allowance. But yeah, I make my bed every morning now. It's made before I shower, brush my teeth, have breakfast. One less thing to worry about, right? Now this machine doesn't have an automatic cutter, no big deal. I'll flip and do the other side like I do my string blocks. And that means this one's gonna go on next. Just kind of figure out where it's gonna go. And as a batik, you can choose which side is the right side and which side isn't. A little narrower. Now normally when I'm making fabric postcards like this, I'll do a lot of the matchstick quilting. I love that look with all the extra quilting in it and everything like that. I've been watching you for a while, never caught you live. Hi, DJ Walker. I'm glad you can catch us live and hang out with us for a little bit. I have some fabric postcards that I'm giving away. If you're new to the live stream part of it, part of it, you might want to go ahead and pick up a fabric postcard. All you have to do is send me an email to my RS Island Crafts. It's down below in the description box. And I will, you know, not many people have requested it, so I have plenty to give away. I don't mind giving away extra. But I like having all of this extra quilting on there like that. And I think, just think it looks great on a zipper pouch and on a fabric postcard. 
because if you compare these two, this one looks neater and more finished than this one that has zero quilting. But I have white thread in, I don't have pink thread in, and I didn't plan to do it, so yeah. I'll give this a nice stitch. I try to stitch a straight line, even if my seam allowance isn't at a quarter of an inch. Clean kitchen is really important. Now, living with my adult children now, they don't, they don't eat. Like, I eat, I start my dinner stuff at like 4, so I usually eat about 5 p.m. or whatever after I feed the cats and everything. And then my kids might not eat until, uh, sometimes Robbie eats at 2 in the morning. He'll make pizza at 2 a.m. And Justin would eat at like 6 or 7 at night, and now Mandy eats usually around 4. So I have a little bit of the batting sticking out here, so I just need to make sure this side is covered well. And when I go and I trim it, I'll make sure that this is my first cut, and then the rest of it will be there. And it'll work out fine. And if not, I'll just add a piece of fabric on there, and it'll still work out fine. I have a video in my playlist that I go on and on and ramble about the postage. But I just stick it in a clean, a clean envelope. Yeah, I like clean envelopes. I pop it in a clear envelope. I pick these up on Amazon, but Hobby Lobby has them in office places. Dollar Tree used to, but they don't anymore. And I have a little sticky on the back. And then I have shipping labels. I put the shipping label on it, and I address it here and here. And then I just put a regular uh, stamp on it, a forever stamp here in the U.S., or an international stamp if I'm going to mail it to an international buddy. And it goes through no problem. I talked to the post office about it, and I spent a few minutes, and we went over all the different things. And a clear envelope is no different than a paper envelope. So don't let anyone give you any grief about it and say it has to be hand-stamped or any process like that. I would just mail it somewhere else at a different post office if you can. Because a clear envelope that's four and a half by six and a half is no different than a paper envelope. The thing that they told me is they need to be able to cancel the stamp. So you have to have a piece of paper for your shipping label so that they can put their little stamp on it and it can process through. By mailing it in the clear envelope, it stays nice and clean. You can mail it like this, just right on the back at the address and put a stamp on it but it could get caught in the machine. It could get oil and grease and stuff on it. That happens a lot. Or you can just put it in a standard white envelope and mail it like that. Oh, the kitchen is a craft room. Mm, that could be hard. Oh yes, I still do that, Susan. I use my six inch ruler and all of my fabric on my shelves are still done that way, and it's been a few years. Yeah, Sue's post office isn't very nice. It's my Gmail account, yes. I mean, either one you'll get a hold of me, but I prefer the Gmail. And I can send them international. And if anyone, as I said earlier, if we have new people in now that just caught the live, if you were to send me a fabric postcard, uh, even not like for this live or whatever, I would create a fabric postcard or take one out of my stash and send it back to you so that, you know, I do one-on-one -on -one swaps or I'll swap with 10 people and we'll mix names up. Instagram does fabric postcard swaps a lot. I don't join as often. Sometimes people will message me because they see my postcards that I post. But I haven't been posting on Instagram very much after the whole move and everything. I have, to, I have to get my rhythm again, but that's the least of my thoughts right now, Instagram. But I'll get back to it, get back in the rhythm. I'm not even, like, looking at very many posts. I'm mostly just watching the reels. I'll be like, okay, let's be honest. Okay, I'm brushing my teeth. Let's let the reels play. Okay, I have to go to use the restroom. I'll let the reels play, you know, just to be honest here. So I'm not watching anything for very long. There we go. And that one is uh, done. And I have a little white corner peeking out here. So if this is a problem, I'll just take it. Let me measure to make sure that... Let's take this extra off. Makes it easier. 
Oh, they're fun. It's great because it's a great use of scraps and it's a great way to just be creative. Some people take a lot more time than I do and they make some beautiful ones. Uh, on Instagram, there's a lot of people that do a hundred, one project a day for a hundred days, the hundred day project or something they call it. And some people make fabric postcards and they don't make quick and easy ones like these. But I kind of like these too. I, I find enjoyment out of these. Now these are batik scraps. I cannot throw any of those away. It's the law. It is the law. I mean, I even have a, a little sandwich baggie that I put these in that I'll add to the fusible interfacing to create a card or something. Okay, where's my thingy? I was like, my mats are already messy, but it's okay. So I have these two bits right there. So I want to make sure that I go past those. So four and a half. Oh, how did I manage? My postcard is now six and a quarter by five. So you know what I'm going to do? Oh, I'm going to make a smaller postcard this time. I will make it four and a half by six and it'll go in my new envelopes and it'll just be smaller and it'll be fine or i can also take a piece of this and i can take it and just stitch it down which is i think what i'll do so i can get it's still not wide enough because i the batting i guess wasn't wide enough because i don't have pieces of batting so my batting must not have been big enough but i can take this and i can just add it on like this and it'll cover up any of those spaces i don't want to lose too much of that blue and green because we really like it so i'll do less of a diagonal i'll do this i picked this size myself no one said it had to be this size i looked up at the post office website the usps and i said you know for what size envelope for a first class stamp you can just google it and it'll tell you right there and it shows you a, a wide variety of sizes So I just chose one that wasn't super small and it wasn't super big, and that's what I went with. Oh, I have two emails from you. That's fine, Leanne. I would have found it. I probably not, I might not have found it right away. I usually check each day to see if I'm getting any mail, and then I go through and I read it before I delete everything. I would have caught you, though. Uh, yes, so Becca, I, I've seen, I don't watch so Becca, but I've seen her come through occasionally on my homepage. Oh, I need to write that down. Sea glass art by Jackie. Sea glass art. I'll just write it in my book. That's okay. That's actually a to do, so that counts to go in my to-do list for fabric postcards. And then let's see if I don't do it right away in three weeks if I can actually read my own writing, right? Okay, so then we can trim this off. I could easily stitch a new piece of batting to this also if I needed to make it bigger. Like if I was doing a swap, I would probably just start a whole new one. But if I was really loving this fabric and I didn't have any more and I had to have it a certain size, I would just go ahead and add a piece of batting to it and franken piece it and then make it bigger. So now my fabric postcard is now five by six and a quarter. So I will trim off. I don't want to lose that blue and green. So I will make it four and a half. Now my new envelopes are a little smaller, so this will actually work well. Plus it's the, it's this part, so when I fold over the flap, I'll just fold it a little further. And if I have to trim off some of my label, I'll trim off my label. Now I can let this go. I might want to keep this little piece here because, you know, wackadoodle. So I take my scissors and I'll trim that and that. Save that piece over there. And there we go. There is the batik. And see, you wouldn't know that I made a mess and I had an oopsie. You would just be like, oh, that's kind of cool. 
I don't even worry about all of this because I'm just going to be putting it down and stitching around it. And even if I was sewing a quilt as you go blocks together or a zipper pouch, I can easily turn this into a coin pouch just like this and it would be fine. It would be fine. All right. So we're coming up on one o'clock. We've been chatting for two hours now. Does anyone have any questions, thoughts, or comments before we try to say goodbye for the day? Robin needs a drink. I'm going to have a burger and french fries. I made a bunch of homemade french fries the other day so I can eat them for a couple days. I eat vegan burgers though because oh, beef and I don't get along that great. Yes, I do beef fajitas, but it's a small amount of beef. A burger is a lot. So burger is one of the items that I'm a little sensitive to in my allergy testing. And I can eat a burger, a regular beef burger on Monday. But if I eat it on Monday and Tuesday, Tuesday night, my tummy doesn't feel good. There is now a postcard template ruler that Ian and so Becca have created perfect size and can be used for fussy cutting. Oh, that's a great idea if that's the way you make your fabric postcards. I just use this ruler for the size and um, as you see I just kind of make it up as I go along. If I find a piece of fabric that I love it's not big enough I add a piece of fabric on the bottom and the sides and I don't there's also a rubber stamp to stamp the back of it but I just sign my name on them. I don't in the year RS Island Crafts 2022 I was signing it down here, but I just decided to put it there. And you got room to put the address here and a little note to someone if you want to mail it to someone after you receive it from me. So I mean, it would be a waste of money for a ruler. There's a lot of people, too, that do the bags and stuff. And they... Let me see. We're chatty. Let me see if I can get this. Close your eyes. A lot of people get like templates and rulers for bags, but I just use, because they're not quilters, so I just use my, my rotary cutter and whatnot. I can, hold on, this is a tough one. Okay, Lord, this is going to be a tough one. You're not going to get my head. I don't want to knock it over. So anyway, yeah, so I don't, I don't do templates too often. That being said, I did purchase a template that I saw on Instagram for a new coin pouch that I'm very excited. So excited that I ordered it Thursday night and I'm wondering why I haven't received it yet. So that you like the cover on my chair until I make a quilted cover. This is what we're working with. Uh, chicken burgers. Uh, yes. Um, but still, I don't want to eat a lot of meat and beef and chicken and whatnot like that. So I, I just, sleepy cat, bye, have a great weekend. Even Walmart sells it. You sewing on the label? Awesome. Ground bison? Yeah, so I just try to stay, I'm, a, I found out based on Google in it that I'm a flexitarian, which means I mostly eat vegetarian and then I occasionally eat some meat. Oh, the Impossible Beef Burgers, that's what I do, Susan. I pick them up at Sam's because they're cheaper there. And I have, I because I don't like to go to, Sam's is busy, cra crazy busy here. So I bought three packages the last time I went. So it'll last me for probably three months. Beyond Meat, maybe that's what I eat. Beyond Meat. Yeah, no, that sounds more like it, Beyond Meat. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to go and look in the freezer. Beyond Meat seems about... Yeah, because the Impossible Burgers, isn't that what they sell at, like, Walmart, at uh, Burger King or something? So Beyond Meat sounds about right. See, I don't even know what I buy. I just know what it looks like. <laughs> I haven't seen anything in mine that I'm allergic to. And I just check for... I only have to check for soy and dairy, so I'm okay. Homemade wings and fries for us tonight. Of course. I can't eat raw celery, which is all right. I don't miss it, but I do miss raw carrots. My latex allergy means I can't eat a lot of the raw proteins in fruits and veggies, but. Uh, yes. So Terry has a uh, YouTube channel, guys. You should go check her out. I, I, so Terry, I'm sorry. I, I'm not following your, I don't watch your videos and stuff. I, 
I can let them run. Sometimes I'll let videos run, but I'm not, I don't have an interest in the old sewing machines that you redo and everything like that. So I eat meat. I like chicken and occasionally I like to have some pork and I do turkey bacon. I love turkey. Tonight I, I cooked up a butterball turkey breast, which was crazy because it costs a lot of money and you don't get a lot, but I like to have turkey and cranberry sauce on a sandwich. Yes, I don't eat any soy. I am highly allergic to soy. Except, I shouldn't, let me correct myself. After I did the allergy testing, I can do soy lecithin because it's so far down on the ingredient list and there's not that much in there, then I can handle soy lecithin. So I do eat that, but I don't eat any type of soy protein or soybean oil. Soy protein is really bad anyway and I, I it, my body doesn't do it. I do have a little bit of a problem with bananas. They give me that little itch between the bottom teeth and the bottom lip if they're not totally ripe. I can't eat raw apples. They make my throat close up. But if you cook it, my allergist says as long as I cook my veggies, even just a little bit, that it will, I need to unplug this iron, that it will cancel out that vegetable protein that's in it that is causing me to swell up and stuff like that. So... Yeah, I can have like an apple pie, but I can't eat a raw apple, which is annoying. Ooh, burgers tonight too. Yeah, burgers sound really good. Celiac is tough. Celiac is tough. Uh, thanks, Terry. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, you know, you have to be... You have to be honest with yourself and with others. And while you might want to hold back on honesty, like if you're like, hey, Robin, you know, you have the ugliest haircut. I don't know why you don't wear makeup. You're fat. You need to lose weight. And I hate your T-shirts. That's a little bit brutal. But if you're like, yeah, you know, Robin's channel, she rambles and talks a lot. She'll start a subject and never get back to it. That's not quite for me. I like the tutorials where nobody talks. It's a five minute video and they're done. I tried making five minute videos, I just can't do it. There's too many things that I want to tell you guys and to give you a little bit of help. The histamine in the food. My son Justin is allergic to shellfish. We found out because we ate a lot of shrimp in Florida. And he cannot have, he's also, he can eat a mango, but he, like me, we're both allergic to poison ivy. So he cannot peel a mango. Someone has to peel the mango for him, and then he can eat the mango. I can't eat tropical fruit due to the latex is what my allergist said, so I don't eat mangoes at all. But, but they're nice. I like mangoes. And if you're sensitive or allergic to things, because there's a difference. You can be sensitive, and then, like, the crossover for the latex is a crossover allergy. It's not an actual allergy, like because I can eat cooked apples, I'm not allergic to apples. So there's sensitivity and allergies, and it's just hard sometimes to differentiate and figure things out. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Oh, Terry, you never know. Some people will say all kinds of crazy things. If you don't like someone's, if I watch a channel, and sometimes, let's face it, it could be the best channel, but if their voice hits my ears at a certain level, and I hate to say it, it's really mean, but if your voice irritates me, I can't watch an hour long video from you, you know? If you laugh in a, in a goofy way that drives me crazy, I'll watch your video still. I just, sometimes I'll take my earphones out if you get into a laughing fit and I'll put them back in. If you talk too much, I'll fast forward to the part I like. I, I'm not gonna tell you, hey Terry, I hate your channel. I don't know why you're working on sewing machines. No one's gonna wanna see that. You know, that's just mean. You don't like it, you just move on. There's another channel for someone else. They're, they say something like there's, I don't know what the number is. I don't know if it's a million or a hundred thousand, but a video that comes out on YouTube every second, every minute, there are tons. Oh, yes. Also, Terry, I found out that's another reason I still wear <clears throat> my medical alert, even though there's not that much latex anymore, but... The peripheral offices like the blood banks and the dentists, they still use latex gloves. But IVP dye that you get 
for a CAT scan that make you glow on the inside. I, I come out in hives everywhere. My lips swells up to like four times its size. So if I were to ever get into a car accident, I couldn't have that kind of CAT scan unless they pump me up with so much Benadryl, I'll sleep for four hours. So it's crazy. Oh, this wristband. I have a video for these wrist cuffs. Um, if you just type in RS Island Crafts wrist cuff, you'll see that and it's just fabric. And I use it to cover up my medical alert because it depends on how much weight I gain or lose and how much inflammation. You don't want to hear this all the time when I'm sewing. So I put it on because it hits the sewing table a lot and that's totally annoying. But since we're just chatting, I can take it off right now. Oh, yogurt. Yeah, I miss yogurt. But I found here there's a, a yogurt that I can eat that they sell at Walmart and it's great. It's nice and thick instead of thin and runny. The frozen mango chunks. I don't think he's had those unless he's like, I've never seen him really eat a bowl of frozen fruit, but I know he takes frozen fruit for his, um, parfaits and stuff like that and it all just depends on what mood he's in because in florida july is mango season they have mango mania and everything so we can get a lot of mangoes at a cheap price i'm just reading comments sorry some voices you yeah you can just turn the voices down you can't it's it's nobody's fault that two people, the YouTube content creator and the person, they just don't get along. And I have some channels that I only watch once a month. If I, if I want to have a long video and I want to like relax and someone's just chitting, chatting and making hand sewing and stuff, I'll watch that. I watch clothes making. I watch quilting and knitting and crochet. Right now they're doing this, how many crochet projects can you make in a week? for the summer craft fair stuff. And that's all over the YouTubes right now. And I'm just having a blast listening to those people spend their week and do what they're doing. I was surprised how much, how many people are allergic to corn. I have to cry during fair season with the fresh corn cobs, yeah. Now I'm just, I'm just a normal human that corn doesn't digest very well, but I do love corn. I, I take it off of the cob. I can't eat it on the cob, but I'm good with that. Yeah, it works really well. I keep saying I'm going to make more, I'm going to make more, but then I overthink it. It's like, okay, this one's pretty good. I'm, I'm facing it to my computer. Like you can see me, this one's pretty good and I like it. I, and I think the one let me just show you up close what I'm thinking about. And I think it's fine because you can always, it's, it's quilted like a quilt. So you could always just iron it again, but it just, these corners pop up. So I'm like, do I need to make it wider with two? No, I just need to stop thinking about it and make it just like this. I asked for everyone's wrist sizes once and you guys are all pretty close to about the same. So I'm like, should I make one with Velcro? No, I don't like Velcro and I don't like sewing it. So you know what? The thing is, if you make things for your shop, if it doesn't fit someone and they don't like it, they won't buy it. It's really that simple. And I think I used, yeah, this is a jelly roll strip like. So it's like, whatever. Oh, yeah, Giovanna, a lot of people have problems. My new MacBook. Um, I, I'm getting used to it. I, I kind of like it. Oh, let me show you what I bought for it. I bought a cover for it and I had to get a mouse because I'm not one of those mouse pad kind of people. And because it's an investment, I wanted to protect it and I slide it on my bookshelf behind me like this. So I got this color. I thought I saw someone in the in the comments in the reviews and they had this color. I'm like, "Oh, I love that color." And then I bought a mouse. It doesn't match, but I think they kind of look good together. I am struggling a little bit because certain things like my hard drive, it has to be reformatted and I have to download something and I'm struggling with getting it to work, but I just haven't had time to watch the video. I have to look and see the mouse scrolls opposite <laughs> with the Mac than it does on my Chromebook. Like when you scroll this way, it doesn't like scroll down, it scrolls up or whatever it does. It's opposite of my other mouse. 
And I do love how sleek... I got my drink right in front of you guys, sorry. I do love how low profile and sleek the mouse is compared to the old school ones. So I love it. I just haven't had time to do much for it. I also got a protective screen I put on it, the same one I use on my phones, except it's not glass. And I, I love, I haven't like changed the background or anything like that. And I did buy the little protector here so you can slide the camera open and closed because on my Chromebook, I have a sticker underneath here, just a piece of paper, I mean, and then the blue painter's tape. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So I bought a pack of three of these, so the camera's not always open, so that's fun. I love that it has a fingerprint to open it and to make purchases and stuff. I do need to start wearing the wrist cuff because I find myself clicking over here, so I either need to put a sticker thing on it or to protect it from scratches. Cause I'm, you know, when you get something brand new, you try to be nice to it and not scratch it up and stuff like that, you know? Let me bring you guys close. Yeah, I have to stop thinking about it, Terry. I just, oh, the air kicked on. I overthink things because I, I want to be, I want to be something for everybody and you can't make something for everybody. Half of you love the skulls, and the other half of you are really nice and thinking, yeah, Robin, I don't want skulls on my stuff. You don't like it, you don't buy it. It's, it's not, I'm not making it for you, I'm making it for someone, and eventually someone will buy it. Things that have been in my shop for years, they still end up getting purchased, so it works out really great. Okay, uh, I work for an allergy clinic. I have a patient who wants an EpiPen holder he can have with him on his belt loop while riding his motorcycle. Can you do a video on how to make one? Not the IUVQ. You know what I think for that? Well, first of all, I, I don't sew with leather, but I think leather would be their best option. But I think for that, I used to carry an EpiPen, but I haven't had a prescription for one because I haven't had, like, insurance and stuff for that. I'm just, I know, I'm bad, but I just try to be really careful in what I eat, and I carry Benadryl all the time. But I think if you make, like, a cell phone holder that you can just have a little pouch with a snap or a zipper on it with a belt loop on the back to just go onto their belt and then they can just carry it like that. Just a little pouch with something on the back. I'd have to have an EpiPen or two to figure out the size and stuff. I can write it down and put it on my YouTube list, but I'll be 100% honest here and upfront. I don't feel like that's something that I would do in the near future. I Just to be honest, I would have to really think and play with that a little and figure it out. And right now, I don't have time to figure anything out. I have to kind of go with what I know and go there. I know, Jackie, I just haven't gotten into the settings to figure out where the mouse settings are to get it to change. I just go and I Google how to change the mouse setting on a Mac, and they walk me through it, and I do it. It's just one of those things that I'll get used to it or I'll change it. If it annoys me enough, I'll change it. Giovanna, I have lost, I think I've lost 10 pounds in the last two weeks, but that's probably only because I gained five pounds from eating jelly beans and stuff. My, my weight fluctuates 10 pounds up and down. Let me see. Um, EpiPen holder for motorcycle. Motorcycle. Um, pant loop. Okay, I put it on my list. I have my little notebook that I keep all of my YouTube uh, requests and thoughts so when I need to do a video I can just go back here and I can go oh how do I do this yeah some of these just aren't going to happen sorry I was reading it <laughs> I'm like what is on my list I will try you could try googling it though sometimes you might be able to find something on there I just oh yeah chapstick is too small but you can make it chapstick and just make it larger Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure, Becky, I, I know I can change the scroll settings. I just, it's one of those things that you just have to take the 10 minutes to do it or the five minutes to do it. I just get sidetracked with so many other things. I'm just scrolling back. No rice, no potatoes, no sugar, no milk, no fried, no seafood. Oh, no, Davi, you're not eating anything. 
you know, once you get to a certain point, it's like I can't go out and eat with a lot of people. I don't go out and eat. I can't tell you the last time I ate at a restaurant. I went to the chicken place that's closed on Sundays that's very Catholic. I can't think of it right now. But I tried their grilled chicken nuggets that are supposed to be good, but they cooked the grilled chicken on the same grill that they cook other food on, so there was a milk cross contamination, and I couldn't, I got sick from it. So it's like, you have to be so careful. Coffee Alley has a question, let me keep going. Corn kills your stomach. Yeah, corn goes through most people. Sometimes I just with a little bit of butter and some salt and pepper, fresh corn in the summer is just amazing. Yeah, I won't be able to misplace this green on the dark bookcase now, will I? I think it was called, I always think like chartreuse, isn't that? I always thought chartreuse was more of a purpley red color, but that might be a Charmaine or something. I don't know. If you really need to know, I can put it up for you. Oh, there's a question. Just want to make sure I thought it was the same question that Coffee Alley asked. I'm not crazy. The rest of the world is. I, I know, okay, after saying that, I am crazy because now that it's warmer, now I'm more comfortable going out, so I will start. There's a walking path around here. If I do the full circuit, it's... Um, I think it's a mile and a half or two miles, and that's usually too much for me. I can't do something regularly. I can walk two miles, no problem, but I can't walk two miles today, tomorrow, the next day. I have to slowly build it up, so I'm going to do like half of it. So there's a nice little area around here as a walking path, so I'll just do that. Oh, go ahead, Jody. You're already probably back by now. Yeah, there's a lot of, for the EpiPens, there's a lot you can purchase. You can also check on Etsy, and there are different ones there that can be purchased. I mean, if you want to make something for them, you might be able to find a pattern on there or just get an idea. I like to search things on Etsy and just see what things look like and then just make it up myself. Yeah, chapstick or lipstick, but there's so many EpiPen holders for kids that you can kind of, because Etsy will give you the measurements down below too. So if you know that my zipper pouch finishes at nine by six, that if you add a half inch to either side or at least a half inch, um, well, most bags are a three eighths inch seam allowance. So if you add an inch to those measurements, you're going to make a bag the same size as mine, just in the fabric you want, and you'll make your own bag and you won't have to pay for mine because let's face it, even though I want to have the, the least expensive cheapest item you still have to pay for the fabric and the Etsy fees and the time and stuff so I can't sell something for five bucks I have to sell it for like 15 because unfortunately that's just the way the world works and I know if we all did something cheaper it would be the way the world works but fabric still costs what's fabric 10 15 dollars a yard for a lot of the fabric I know you can get it for seven but a lot of times it costs more, so you got to balance everything out. It's a hard game to play. Bye, Constance, unless you've already gone. Thank you for hanging out with us. Bye, Jody. Oh, I'm already good. Half the time my hair is already in the 70s and 80s. We're going to get going anyway. It's after 1 o'clock. We've been here for over two hours. But if anyone has any more questions, you can ask them in the replay after it comes up. Uh, you won't see these comments or anything for at least 24 hours, but you can comment on the video once it's done formatting and everything like that. Remember, if you wanted a fabric postcard, to go ahead and send me your mailing address. I'll do the best I can. And sometimes, to be honest, I'll just tell you thanks, sent, or it's going in the mail tomorrow. I won't leave a big overly conversational email and if I can't send it to you because 30 people all of a sudden emailed me that never happens I'll just say I'm sorry um, catch me on the next live and I'll send you one then all right that's it everyone thank you guys so much for hanging out with me next time I'll try to make it so you can see my head when I'm chatting and you got a good angle of the fact that, yeah, I need to lose a little weight, don't we all? Exercise a little more, and shouldn't we all?
but I do pretty good with my eating until, um, well, until I get jelly beans, I can't control myself, but thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you guys on Whip It Wednesday, and then we have the video on Friday. My patrons have a video tomorrow, and yeah, I'm hoping my first thing after I eat lunch, my first thing is going to be to put up those community blocks. That's my first thing. I can't play until those are up. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.